Hey everybody, we're gonna give this a shot. Uh, I am trying, like always, playing around, trying to see what works best and what doesn't. Um, so I've got a two camera setup right here and we'll see how it goes. Uh, should be interesting. Um, today, once again, we're not doing Disney paintings. We're doing a, uh, um, a Harry Potter themed painting. And there's a, there's a conjuration is next, next weekend. So I'm trying to get one or two paintings ready to sell for that, for that show. Um, and so this particular one is Dumbledore's study. I've already done the kind of background. Uh, and today is going to be fun because what I'm going to wind up doing is going through and actually, um, I'm going to go through and actually paint the Phoenix. I'm going to paint Fox right here. He's got a little stoop right here. And, um, we're going to have an entire, an entire, uh, um, Phoenix up here. Uh, but the fun part is I'm going to paint him completely using a palette knife. So I'm going to kind of use a brush just to give myself an idea of where he's going to be. Um, and then, and I'm going to take some, you know, leeway here as well. Um, so I'm going to put a head kind of here. I'm just going to kind of sketch everything in right now. Put a body here, and a tail. You probably can't even see this, honestly, and that's okay. Again, like I said, most of this is going to be with a palette knife. Um, I'll kind of bring him down like that. And then we're going to have some wings that are going to kind of come up here and then just kind of do that. Kind of fun when you sit here and you have a painting that you've done and then you're just gonna just go to town on the top of it, right? Yeah, he'll go like that. Alright, so no issue here with the head. I think that should be like that. But anyway, so I have a basic idea of where he's gonna be. Uh, and so now thinking this through I probably should have had all of my paints already squeezed squeezed out but I'm gonna get myself a decent amount of reds and oranges and yellows um, Fox being a, a Phoenix of course it's all fire and what's gonna be really fun is just going in with a paint with a palette knife and trying to put kind of an abstract form on here um, I'm playing around I mean it's gonna be very loose very um, you know so we'll see we'll see kind of how it goes um, but he's gonna definitely be a lot of dark reds and so you see this is kind of how the palette knife works is you're just going to be layering just a ton of paint on here. All different colors if we want to. Um, you know, they get to mix and that kind of thing. They're going to kind of look like feathers on here. I think his head's a little bit, head's a little bit kind of, a little bit lighter. There's actually going to be some yellow kind of right here right before his beak. I'm going off some of the basically what's in the in the movies is where I'm getting my references from. But and then you'll see I have the little um, perch thing for him, but I haven't. I haven't painted that in really just yet because palette knife painting is also very kind of messy and I don't want to go through and put in all of that detail and then, um, you know, have to repaint over it. So we're going to try to get in kind of the 
shape of the bird first. I'm actually going to have. I should put his feet in here. I actually need some black, I think, as well. So, yeah, I know I started this thing as a Disney themed um, stream. And uh, I'm actually really missing going in and painting the, the Disney paintings. But that being said, um, you know, I, I, I kind of need to get the, um, get the Harry Potter stuff done while I can. So we've got a beak here. The problem with conventions is that they, they come up and, you know, depending on what the convention is, you're like, oh, well, I need to do X or Y or Z for that. And um, and then what happens is you're like, oh, well, I should I should work on that versus the other thing. It's gonna be where the kind of eye is, and and so as much as I would like to sit here and focus solely on um you know focus solely on the the Disney paintings that I was enjoying, um you know I got to get this done for the convention, so. That's, uh, you know, I could have just not streamed today, but it, it, it seemed like this might be a fun thing to, to watch, so, or to have recorded anyway. I'm not entirely convinced anybody's watching as I'm live streaming this. I'm not at that point yet, but that's okay. problem is I have a brand new computer now so I can do cool things like have two camera angles and you know look at you while I'm talking as opposed to you just seeing my hand um, but the flip side of that is that I can't I feel like I can't really touch the camera at all while I'm painting because it um, I could get paint on the keyboard I don't want to ruin my very nice, very expensive camera or uh, computer just yet. I suspect it'll happen at some point, but not this day. So right now we're just going to kind of come in and I'm not worried about the colors all that much. I'm mainly worried about covering the canvas with Covering the canvas of the part that I'm going to be painting, as well as um, kind of making sure I have the right shape here that I'm pleased with. I'm kind of I've painted birds before, but I don't paint birds often, <laughs> and so I don't. It's it's been a little while since I've painted with a palette knife too, honestly. So. Um, This will be interesting to see how this turns out. I do love painting with palette knives. Um, I love the fact that you can only do so much detail and I love the texture that you get out of it you do it right. I will be honest though, I've never actually tried painting 
doing a palette knife painting onto the background of an already painted image. Um, that is not something that I've done. And it seemed like this would be a perfect experiment for it, except that if I'm selling this and it doesn't quite work out properly, then... Ooh. One of the downsides with palette knife painting, sorry, is that you have to put some decent pressure on your canvas. The problem, actually, you know what, I'm gonna slide the canvas just back. So the problem with these can't with these is that um, these easels have a little notch in them down here at the top and the bottom, um, which actually you can't see anyway. Um, and when you're painting a normal painting, if you have it all tightened up where that notch is, um, then you can't actually paint there. So you lose just you know that much that much of the painting and you have to go in and, and repaint it later. So um, usually I have it set up where I don't have to worry about that. But A, the problem with palette knife paintings is that um, you have to put some serious force and pressure on there. And then B, um, but the other thing is that I'm not painting that part anyway. All right. Well, the downside here kind of looks like a vulture in all honesty I'm gonna say he kind of looks like a vulture to me but I think that's to be expected So now what we're trying to do is figure out how to adjust Basically what I'm doing here is I'm really just playing around with the, the shapes right now. I'm trying to make sure that I'm getting him in the proper position. I think I think his head's too big is the problem here. So this is kind of the part where I and also he's got a lot more yellow in him than I was. Than I remembered. Um, so I think that's not going to make his head any. Well, maybe if. So 
the problem is right here it's gonna be his back wing peeking in so I could probably just ignore that It's gonna be one of those paintings where I'm gonna have to come back and fix the background, but that's the background's just books. Maybe. I think he needs to. I think the problem is I have him leaning. Maybe the problem is his eyes in the wrong spot. <laughs> that could also be the problem. We're just going to be doing a lot of kind of playing around here. Yeah, I think what I'm going to do is make kind of this part of him be more yellowy and that should distinguish it from the background. So the fun part also about or uh, distinguish it from the from the wings. That way we can come in here with some dark reds and we can kind of clean up that neckline. Like that. The other fun part here that once I get once I get everything set up and I get him uh, kind of in the position that I want him to be in I assume Fox is a him I think I had this, this question last time I was painting and I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna put just a just a metric ton of fire um, everywhere I like the idea of him actually being on fire in this painting um, as opposed to just being kind of a, a red bird. Let's see. So I think his body, I think, I think what the problem is is I want his wings to be bigger. Well, goodbye sorting hat. this all together. Go ahead 
like that, I think. Yeah, I like that better. Let's go ahead and get some shadowy colors in here. come back in what's gonna happen is we'll come back in in a minute once I've got everything kind of where I want it I'm gonna come back in with um, with like a bunch of bright colors right right now we're getting our, our darks and stuff in our, our blacks our dark reds haven't even opened up the white yet you know and I'm gonna come back in with I'll come back in with the whites and the bright yellows that one kind of like that there we go oh yeah hi um <laughs> sorry I'm not used to checking to see what I'm uh, what I'm looking at or who's in the room um, so Harry Potter is, um, you know, obviously it's wizards and all that kind of fun stuff and magical creatures. Um, and, uh, there is a creature called, uh, Fox, who is a phoenix. And he appears in, um, in the study of the headmaster. Um, and so right now I've got kind of like the library background, um, going on with, um, you know, a bunch of books and sorting hat and then some other you know kind of just random things in there and um and fox is the phoenix who is going to be catching fire as he explodes and then is reborn um as as phoenixes do um so if that if that helps um harry potter i mean harry potter's a fun a fun series i really enjoyed reading it as it was coming out um i thought the movies did a very good job um, the, the convention I'm going to in Atlanta called Conjuration is, uh, not just Harry Potter. It's basically all things magical and supernatural. Um, so there's a, there's a bunch of different kind of stuff there. Um, but I usually go and every so often I will, um, you know, I'll show up with a, a new painting, um, that's, that's Harry Potter themed, um, you know, whatever it might be. So, uh, I've, I've done several, I've got a, I've got a Harry Potter series. Um, and if you're not familiar with the, with the movies as much, then you might not, or with the books, then you might not, um, understand about me. I mean, it's all, you know, it's, uh, wizards and it's castles and it's British landscapes, um, that kind of thing. So it's, you know, it, it's, it's a fun, it's a fun uh, series, and it's a fun series to paint. I mean, there's a lot of, a lot of beautiful things in there to paint. So, um, yeah. So hopefully, by the time this is all said and done, we'll have a very nice, nice phoenix here. Um, like with everything, I feel like, <laughs> I feel like it winds up being um, when you first start doing any of the any painting, it's 
you sit there and you wonder, oh, well, that looks horrible. And, um, you know, it's only when you go in afterwards and you start putting in the details and the, you know, you, you refine your lines and that kind of thing, I think, at least for me personally, is when everything starts to really come together. Um, so I think that's, you know, so, um, you know, but yeah, hopefully by the end of all of this, we'll be looking, looking good. Um, come in here and put a little bit, of, a little bit of white on here. The other fun thing about a Phoenix and about palette knife paintings in general is that this is, um, you, you can only do so much. I mean, it's, you know, I don't have the, uh, I don't have the brush strokes that, that you might have from, you know, I don't have the detail brushes. I don't have anything else like that. I literally have this knife and that's what I'm using. Um, so you get something that's a lot more, I mean, honestly, it's a lot more abstract, um, which is kind of fun. You get, um, you know, you can put some detail in, obviously, but, oops, but you don't get, uh, I mean, you don't, you're not, you're not left with a huge amount. Um, I've done several palette knife paintings. I've done several Disney palette knife paintings that are um, very large, very fun to do. Um, and you can, you can see those on the website. Um, I'm, I'm going to... I keep meaning to start a new one for the Disney series, but it's not, uh, I, I need the reference photo. And so I won't be back down until December or in, yeah, until December. And once I'm down there, I'm going to take the camera and grab all my reference photos so I can do my next large 24 by 36 palette knife painting. So, but yeah, thanks for the question. And, um, Thanks for watching. I, you know, that's cool. I've just started doing this. Um, this is probably only my fourth or fifth painting um, that I've streamed. Uh, I mean, I've I've been painting for forever, but um, just started doing Twitch. So I'm still kind of learning, still kind of trying to see how it works out and that kind of stuff. Um, still trying to figure out how to get people to watch and that kind of thing, but. All right, so let me go in here before we do anything else. I'm going to put an eye in there and see if we can get that looking the way we want it to. Palette knife painting is, is quite literally just getting paint, putting it down, scraping it off, you know, that kind of thing. So when it comes down to eyes, I'm going to have to go back and redo the beak, I think. Um, and actually, I really want... Do, do, do. The downside with palette knife painting is it uses a lot of paint. And for someone who doesn't have too much paint, I have a lot of paint. I don't like I don't like wasting it. Not wasting it. I don't like squirting out a ton of it and then um, and then you know not using it at the end. So I have my uh, my palette knife painting winds up being me sitting here and squeezing out tubes very often just to make sure I have the proper colors and everything, but also to make sure I don't waste them. Um, sorry. One thing you'll learn watching me is that when I'm concentrating, I find it hard to talk. Is that how I want them? Let's see. Do, do, do. I think I do it like that. So 
So, but yeah, I'll be taking breaks many times to put new paint down, essentially. So let's see. Onto my palette, I mean, if that makes sense. I don't know, I've never been one to sit there and, um, you know, have a camera on my palette and say, these are the colors I'm using and that kind of stuff. And I think mainly that's because I don't mix paint on my palette very much. I mix it much more often on the canvas itself. Um, So one of the downsides to painting over a painting that's already dried is if you weren't careful, like I wasn't, um, you have lines in your underpainting where the paint was thicker than it usually is. And so one of the tricks that you have to do is you just have to make sure. And if you paint a, you know, if you're doing palette knife painting, it's not going to be a huge issue. But it is one of those things where you need to go in and make sure that Hey, this very straight line that was my shelf, um, <laughs> make sure I've at least broken that up enough that you can't tell that that line is behind Fox because then it, then it causes issues. All right, so I've made him a little bit lighter. I've made him a little bit oranger. Um, I think he stands out a little bit. His body does from the from the feathers that are behind him, which is fixes one of my concerns. Um, I like the way his eye looks. Could come in here with a little bit of. That. A little bit more brown will pronounce this. Make this beak a bit more pronounced. Like that. And when we come in with my bright yellows, I'll make sure to highlight this as well. I'll highlight with some white too. Too much white. I think this line's wrong. Yeah, I think I want it to be come in a little bit like that. And I think I want his head to go up a little bit. So kind of like that. Maybe it needs to come out a little bit more. Birds are fun. They're all sorts of all over the place. There we go. I think that works. cool thing about palette knife is that you can come in and use the edge and you know, do little things like that, scrape some paint off, and all of a sudden you have some really cool feathering effects.
and you can use it ever so slightly, kind of scrape it along. And it kind of drags and just gives some, you know, cuts into some of the paint that's already on there. All right. So, yeah, we like that. I think we do. Let's see. So I think the next thing I want to do is make sure, so there's this little rod thing here, right? And I wanted to make sure I had everything in place first. I'm actually going to wind up what's going to happen. I'll have to scrape that part off because there, like that. Actually, that makes it look better. So we do it that way. What's going to happen is the box is going to have any bird. It's going to have a couple talons. They're going to come down onto here. Make sure he's got a place to perch. I'm just scraping the canvas, like scraping the canvas. Like if there's paint that is uh, not where I want it to be, uh, you can just scrape it off. And it's actually kind of interesting because usually when you do that, you have to put other paint on top of it. But for me, because I'm kind of merging these styles, um, I'm, I'm really not going to have to. I'm just going to come back in with a brush once this is dry. And as long as there's no paint on top of it. It should be okay. Alright. So we've got some talons that are kind of hard to see. Because, well, you know... I'm looking at the texture, whereas you guys can only see the color from this angle, I think. So they do need to be highlighted anyway. So we'll come in here. We'll kind of mix up a very light brown. And we'll go in here and a little bit of the highlights on there. Kind of like that. And again, I can always come back in when I'm touching up the background with my brush. I can always come back in and um, update the color a little bit. That. And then we're going to make sure that all of the paint on this bar is cut off. I'm actually really excited about coming back in and painting this because the last time I did a palette knife painting that I let dry, because you're usually supposed to do it all at once while it's wet. The last time I, let, I did one that was having to dry and then let me go back on it, um, I was doing it with a palette knife. Like, I mean, that's that's usually how I do it. Is I'm it's a palette knife painting, and so I'll put a layer down, have to go back and make changes, and it gets super cumbersome because I'm trying to get in. Like, if I was painting that bar with the palette knife, I'd have to get in there and try to make those changes and such, which is difficult, um, obviously. So. 
this way it's it's much easier. All right, what comes next? Well, I think we're gonna work on these guys a little bit. Those wings. Let's give them. Really, what I'm putting off doing is at some point I get to come in here. Sorry. Wow, I shoved my face in front of the camera. Uh, at some point, I get to come in here with 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 my uh, the fire part of the phoenix, um, the part where the phoenix is going to sit there and literally just catch on fire and on flames. And the problem with something like that is it's going to mean it's going to mean that. Uh, just kind of get to go in and you know fire and flames and everything go everywhere <sighs> which is terrifying it's like I don't know who's uh, ever painted like followed along with Bob Ross or something but you'll be sitting there and you know you like I used to watch him it's actually how I started painting was uh, watched him for three months straight while I had a my first kid was born and up all night and that's how we'd go to sleep um, but you'd always see him do this like massive like very beautiful landscape kind of deal and then the next thing you know is he'd be like all right we're gonna put a tree in there and he would just cover a good you know just do a giant giant black line right down the center of the painting where his tree was gonna go and um, that's just a very, I mean, it to you, you, that's a very nerve wracking thing to do. So like it was nerve wracking in and of itself, just putting the Phoenix on here, I think. Now I have to go in and All right. So, I mean, I could leave. Mm. I don't want to leave it. I want to have. I want to have flames. I want to have big, bright, yellowy flames. Kind of. No bugger. How do I want to do this? All right, so you guys get to sit here. This is going to be so much fun for you. You get to sit here and watch me be indecisive for a couple minutes while I figure out what exactly I want to do. So I could have some flames kind of coming up from his wings, circling around, popping out like a solar flares. That's the easy part first. Yeah, you kind of got to, don't you? Up they go. Yep, there it goes. I guess they'll all be going upwards, won't they? See, there we go. Once you get started on it, you're like, oh yeah, that looks great. Also, I gotta cover up all this background somehow. Can't do that. This part will be under the frame, but I'll go ahead and get some there anyway. 
this is also the part where it's like, you know, hey, it doesn't really matter that I'm not entirely sure how well my bird painting is because, well, he's on fire. So, you know, that's cool. Lots of whites. Blending in with the reds already in there. Come over here to this side. So the other fun part with Where'd my yellow go? Here's my yellow. The other fun part with the um, palette knife painting is I feel like it really, really captures motion. And so especially if you're doing something that's, you know, like fire and whatnot. I think you get the the motion and the feel of it and the experience of it way more so than than you do a brush I mean I mean you you know people know how to use brushes properly and stuff but you know I think it's easy, so much easier coming in here and using the knife and you get this kind of organic flowy scrapey kind of feel the things you don't really have control over it you know everything's blending together but that's kind of how you plan it hopefully you know you come in you say well I want some white here but you know that's only gonna work a little bit before It is kind of sad because I spent a good chunk of time working on this on this background, and uh, yeah, that's that's uh, also I'm losing the detail on Fox again as he's on fire. See, I'm gonna have to come back and try to figure out how to fix that. And maybe I don't. I mean, you know, maybe that's. That is what it is, and it's just um, you know everything gets blended in into in the fire at this point. All right, so now we're gonna go in. I'm gonna try to come in and put some kind of white highlights. to give that fire just a little bit of extra heat, you know? And then, yep, 
Even more yellow. This painting is going to kill all my yellow. Yellow is a um, it's a trans it's a very transparent paint I found, um, and so I usually, you know, when you use it, it tends to run out very quickly on me. It takes a lot of yellow essentially to get a very vibrant yellow color. Is what I found. So like anything that I touch the yellow with is going to automatically turn it. <laughs> it's not going to be yellow. It's going to be a yellowish color. But to get an actual pure yellow, you just need a lot of that paint. And so um, I tend to go through. I, I don't, honestly, I don't use it too often. But when I do, I go, I go through it a lot. So um, after this, I'll probably need to go buy a new tube of it or something. If you mix it with white, you get a little bit more out of it, but so there we go. I also think I really enjoy just the sound of the palette knife as it scrapes on the canvas. It's a very lovely sound, I think. Get some orange I can. So, for those of you who are just joining us, so far I've taken a perfectly good painting and I have ruined it. Well, not ruined it, but I've taken a perfectly good painting and then I've put a bird on top of it, a phoenix. And I said, yeah, that looks pretty good. And then I took that perfectly good painting and I said, we're gonna light it on fire. And that's where I am right now. Um, so, I've got a bird on fire. It's actually kind of hard to tell because I put a lot of fire on there. So now we get to go in, now that I've kind of had my my fun, you might say. I gotta find a way of figuring out how to make Fox's head kind of stick out a little bit. And usually you can do that with shadows, you can do that with highlights, you can do that with texture. Try. Maybe I could do it with yellow. So I took some kind of very bright yellow. So 
come in here and I'll mix it with my with some white. Fox. It's gonna go blonde, and then I'm gonna take a little bit of my kind of dark red. And put it back there. like that maybe even some black honestly just right where those wing shadows would be okay not that much black yeah, kind of like that yeah I think over here is okay I think that's going to work. There we go. Sorry, concentrating happens. And then we'll come back in and we'll get this bright yellowy white color. Um, yeah, apparently Fox is going to be a platinum blonde kind of hairstyle right here, but that's okay. I like this. To be fair, I mean, he does have a lot of yellowy colors. There we go. Kind of like that. And then I'll come in here and get like a kind of a brighter orange for his, what do you call those on birds? Chest? There's a, there's a term for the this part here. Crest. No, the crest is the top. I don't know. I'm sure somebody knows. I know a lot of people know. They're just not watching. But... Maybe it is the chest. that I've actually got magenta in here as well and I'm using some no um no warm color or no cold colors like no um I don't have any like blues or greens or anything or, like you know purples or anything I guess I could I might I might bring some purples in I got that magenta color. Let's see. So now you guys, you guys step back every so often and kind of take a look, have a sip of coffee. I think this part here 
I was trying to make a thing come out of his chest in there too. I don't think I like it, so we're gonna kind of move that paint around a little bit. So it's like that. shadowy kind of color right there. Blend it in some. All right, gonna have to come up here and Feathers. Like that. The problem is that as you come in, Anytime you move paint around, you're gonna screw up what's already there, so. You have to kind of be very gentle with a palette knife. Because if you're too hard on it, what happens is it, um, well, what happens is that if you're too hard, you'll just mix with whatever's underneath it. And then you just get kind of like this muddy kind of color that I guess it works okay in a burning phoenix, but... You know. I got this orange color here. We'll put some down there. A little bit more, a little bit more paint. Again, like I've said, I enjoy mixing on the canvas, so. The problem with this kind of paint style is that this, uh, it's gonna take forever to dry. Like I know I'm saying it's for a convention, like in a week. Um, and I'll have it there, but if anybody decides to buy this painting, um, they're, they're gonna to have to be careful with it because it's still gonna be, it'll still be tacky. It won't, let's see, in about a week? Eh. I don't think it'll have issues with it, like, still smearing and whatnot. Oil paint takes a long time to dry, for those who might not know. Um, like, a very long time to dry. And while... I 
And so while it, um, you know, it might not, it might not be too bad. Um, like you, you wouldn't, I don't think you would, I think by next week, usually an oil painting takes, for me anyway, you know, within three days or so, it's dry enough that I can move it around. Um, but sometimes it's, you know, it can be a lot, a lot more than that. So, um, this particular one, it's going to be, uh, I mean, it's going to take longer because there's a lot of there's just a lot of paint on it, you know. Obviously, there's there's just a lot of paint, a lot of um, you know, a, a lot that needs to dry. So, yeah, probably probably this particular one. I mean, yeah, it'll be dry. It'll be tacky. It might be tacky. It might be still like you might touch it and be like, oh, but that's a little sticky but it should be okay by conjuration by next Friday in a week so um, you know so there's that so now I'm just coming kind of coming in and putting in a little bit of extra details Little bit sorry about my laptop continuing to ding it's uh i forget that i need to mute it again new laptop not really used to uh having emails come through usually it's online and stuff i don't know if that makes sense all right, um, but yeah, so I'm just gonna go through, grab a little bit of colors and like, you know, add the little bits of flame that comes up from any kind of massively bright fire. You know, it's like little details like that that are always nice to have. Make sure that my edges of the fire are sharp and pokey-like. Kind of like that. One of the things is when you do a palette knife painting, you want to make sure that you give them, you know, whoever's gonna be interested in this painting if anybody's you know or, or if it's yours I mean you you want the palette knife to show I mean you want it you want to see that paint sticking up and, and raised up and that kind of thing oh that's his beak oh shoot yep uh, buggered that one up which honestly means it's probably time for me to be done um, that's how I always know when I'm done is I keep going and I keep adding more and more things, more and more things, and then I screw something up. Um, and once I get to that point, I say, hey, it's time to go. Uh, time to stop working on this. Um, so... I don't think I'm going to go just yet. I think I'm going to try to fix that for this paint that I couldn't find. holes. Yeah, 
might wind up having to fix this with a with a brush later, but you know, that's okay. Actually, one of the cool things about doing it this way where I kind of am mixing it up is that uh, I don't have to worry as much. Like in the past when I've done palette knife paintings, I've really just wanted to, you know, I like to be able to say, yes, the entire thing is a palette knife painting. Um, but um, because this one's not, I don't mind it, and I can go back in and fix it with a brush and be okay with that. Probably should have done these little details earlier, but then I might have just painted over them. See if I can tap a little black dot. Oh man, my hands are all over the place. Did I get it? Do I like it? I'm not entirely sure. Put a white dot back. too much you know I had it and then I lost it so now I gotta try to find it again but this is kind of what it all comes down to there we go yeah, I like that. All right. Um, all right, so I squeezed out a little bit of purple here. I think I'm just going to try to add it in. Hmm. Maybe just very transparent purple so it's not really going to show up very much so I think it'll add a little bit of color just a little bit kind of like this The cool thing about when you're doing something that's like this style of painting, where it's um, kind of all over the place, I won't say abstract, but I mean, yeah, it's kind of abstract somewhat. You can put random colors in. Honestly, you can put random colors in anywhere you want to. That's always kind of fun. You're like, well, it's, I mean, and one of the, I mean, one of the best examples of that, I think, is um, like shadows, for example. Shadows are, in landscapes, usually wind up being somewhat blue, you know? Let's see, let's take a look at this, let's see what it needs. I think I want some more just red. The shadows are usually blue. And what winds up happening is sometimes you can just put a touch of blue in 
to whatever shadow you color you're making. And you're fine. But then other times you're like, well, what if I put a lot of blue in? And then you put a lot of blue in and you're like, oh, that's actually kind of cool. You know? come in here. I think I'm about done, like I was saying. But what I'll do is I'll kind of come in here and use the edge of the knife to just kind of carve in some extra lines. Get the edge into there. Again, we're talking about texture here at this point. Texture, motion, flowing. about knives and canvases and stuff is it's uh you're never gonna go through the canvas I mean I guess you could but not usually shooting off the paint there all right and with that I think I think I'm about there. So, for those of you watching now or that might be catching a replay or something, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I promise I'll get back to Disney painting soon enough. Uh, I gotta, I'm gonna try to stream Monday, I think. But it's also going to be another Harry Potter one. Um, I was finishing this guy up, and or finishing the background for this guy up anyway, and I realized that this would be a perfect example or a perfect time to also do a companion piece that would be the same style, but with uh, Hedwig, the um, you know the the owl. And so I quickly put together a, a background for Hedwig. And um, now I have to go in and, because he's also going to be a palette knife, I got to go in, or, or she, we, um, going to go in and have to really uh, do that one pretty quickly. So that will be, that will be coming up on Monday. And then after that, I promise I will be back to... Um, I promise I will be back after that to, to Disney painting. So, um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, like I said, I'm still working on this formatting. Um, so hopefully this is, uh, you guys had fun and, um, keep an eye out on my Instagrams and, um, that kind of thing. And I'll have the finished painting of this when it's available will be online. Um, and so, um, yeah, but you guys, uh, take care, have a good weekend. And uh, I'm sure I'll uh, catch you guys next week. Let's see if I can do this without getting paint all over my keyboard. And how about this? I'll tell you, a brand new computer. You know, the problem is the old computer I have isn't strong enough to actually run. Um, isn't strong enough to run the uh, software to stream for Twitch. I mean, that, that's how bad of a computer it was. So anyway, 
You guys, take care. See you next week.